from today is the last day of class. And we're done. Uh, so if you if you're not passing or your attendance is off a little bit, tomorrow's a makeup. Now, if you come and make up, it's scary. Uh, I record your time. It's recorded. It's it won't show up in the computer at first. But if the last day rolls around and the only reason you're failing is attendance, I'll pull back that makeup time and apply it. And hopefully it's worth it. But I do that for the mere fact is uh, you asked Miss. Uh, because she's the one that put me on to this. We'll have students, and I know none of you would do this, but she would have students show up on Friday to make up time and then skip Monday. You're not you're not making up time to skip. You're making up time because you've skipped. Or I'm not saying you'd skip, but you weren't here. Hey, you're the same on the days of school. What? I would think so. Right. But having said that, they don't do it, but we're going to go with it. Uh, so we're going to do that. Again, I'll be here. If nobody shows up, I'll go with the, if anybody shows up for my uh, afternoon class tomorrow, I'll go bowling with them. If not, I'll stay here. I got no problem staying here. I love to bowl, but I'd rather be here you guys passing than going there and bowling. Uh, okay, so we're talking about uh, operating and maintaining a vehicle. This is you already own the vehicle. This is kind of important for the fact that, guys, you own a car, you're going to put money into the car. You don't just have it in great. You're going to have, you're going to have to put some money into it. At the very least, you've got to put gas in the car, which is an expense. Uh, when you, if you use your vehicle for, for work, I'm not saying drive to and from work, but once you get to work, if your boss asks you to go run an errand for them, you can write those miles off on income tax. Uh, so this is a way to figure out how much it costs to drive your vehicle. Uh, if your vehicle costs too much, and this is a way to figure out if it does, it may, it may lead you to believe, hey, I might want to get another vehicle. It's costing too much to drive what I got. So this is a way of doing it. So you're trying to figure out what your vehicle is doing, okay? A couple terms is one is called depreciation. Depreciation is, and I know you guys have all heard this. This is the cost of the vehicle. This is the age of the vehicle. When you buy your vehicle, it's as high a price as it's ever going to be until it becomes a classic. When you drive off the lot, it's going to start dropping in price. Some cars drop really fast. You drive off the lot, you lose ten thousand dollars in value immediately. Some cars. They may stretch out for a while and they won't drop in value that much, but you will never get the price back as soon as you drive off the lot. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So that's depreciation, which is, it's a cost of the vehicle. Because, and, and I, I appreciated this when I heard it, I've, I've heard it for years, but I never heard it on TV. About a year and a half ago, a lawyer was talking on the radio and said, if you need money, we'll buy your car. Because think about it, if you're getting ready to get thrown out on the street, you got no food, you got nothing, and all you got is a car, you can live in your car, but they're not very comfortable. You can sell your car. So the higher the price of the car, the more you get for it. Okay. So your car is an asset. You can use it. Okay. So that's just one of the reasons to do depreciation. So depreciation is a is, is a is a cost for the car. How much value does it lose per year? It's a it's a cost of the car. There are there are several several types of costs you have on a vehicle. Depreciation falls into the variable class. Excuse me, they classify the state. I apologize. It's been like three years since I've talked this class. Okay, depreciation is a fix. It pretty much stays the same because you're losing costs every year. But you have two types of costs, variable and fixed. Variable is the more you drive the car, the more it's going to cost. Toll, gas, oil, maintenance, tires, things like that. Those would be variable costs. If I get my car and I park it up on this on blocks, it's the variable costs are going to drop to almost nothing. Okay? Because I'm not driving, I'm not putting any strain on the car. 
Fixed costs are going to be pretty much consistent across the board. They will stay the same whether I drive the car or not. In the state of Oklahoma, if you own your car, you are required to maintain a registration on it. You've got to pay the taxes every year. Um, when I lived in Louisiana, if you weren't going to drive your car, take your license plate, take it down to the tag agency, and they would stop charging you registration fee until you started driving again. Then you go back and get your title and get it back to go. <clears throat> when we got here, we had a vehicle we weren't driving, and we called and said, nope, you're still paying taxes on it, even if you don't drive. You may stop paying the insurance, but you're going to have to pay the tax on it every year. So check with your, call, your states. Uh, you're going to have to have insurance, fixed insurance. Now, assuming you, if you park it, you can cancel your insurance. But as long as you're driving it, you've got to have insurance. Uh, you got to pay taxes on it. You got to pay registration on it. You got to do some other things. Uh, loan, if you're buying the car, you're going to be paying interest on it. You're going to pay your interest on the loan. So that's, an, that's a thing. Uh, depreciation, which is the last one, is that's actually a separate formula. But depreciation is what did I buy my car for? What, when I bought my car, what was it worth? Okay. The second part of this is an estimate because you don't know unless you actually sell your car, but you can use Kelly Blue Book. What is my car worth? If I sold it today, what would it be worth? And then how many years have I owned my car? I bought my car three years ago. So 6,000 divided by three, my depreciation would be $2,000. It's an expense on the car, $2,000 just because I lost that much value in my car for the last three years, per year, okay? So what you're gonna do is, <coughs> question number one, two, three, and four, they're all kind of related. Chantel Jones purchased a new two-door coupe for $24,590. That is what she bought it for. Okay, right now she estimates again, estimates until she sells it. She don't know what she did it for. Nineteen thousand two nineteen, and that's two years ago. So twenty four five ninety. Minus 19,219. Divided by two, yeah. 2,685.50. Yeah, there you go. So that's my depreciation. So on, on the chart, you see depreciation over here, question number one. That will be your depreciation. So on question number one, you will put 2,685.50 right there. <clears throat> then what you're going to do is you're going to add up everything in the first column, the variable costs, 1576.24 for gas, 71.85 for oil changes, 151.36, 154.36. For maintenance on the vehicle, I had to replace the belts, I had to change out the battery. I had to do stuff, okay? Cleaning, total, and parking. Again, you can you can rank this however you want. You can come up with your own categories. What'd you get? 2,125, 2,125? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is my total variable cost. Okay, and then you're going to do the fixed costs. Remember, on depreciation goes under fixed. You see, so you subtract your variable cost from your depreciation. No, you uh, no, you add depreciation into it. Oh. Eleven, sixteen, eleven, 
Seventy-six, forty-three. Am I even close? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, was I wrong? No, you're right. Okay. So that's my total fixed cost. Okay, and the total annual cost is you add the fixed to the uh, the variable to the fixed. So this is gonna be my total annual cost. Make sure you check your mail. Okay, so that would be my total annual. Now it doesn't do this on this. I thought about doing this. I keep forgetting. Uh, from here, one of the things, and it's an index on what you do, and this is where the taxes come into involved. Cost per mile. Okay, cost per mile is a way for you to estimate how much it costs to drive your car. So what you do is you take the total cost that you got. I'm assuming this math is right. I didn't have a calculator to check it to make sure. Which is three. Yeah. So three, I can't see. It is now. <laughs> okay. So you take the total cost that you got per year and you divide it by the number of miles you drove that year. And it says up here 14,322. So 63 Divided by 14,322. And what I have is I got 44 cents a mile. After I did the math, you don't, there's no place to enter this. So this is 44 cents a mile. As of the last time I, I, I did this research, the federal government, if you use your car for business, they will re, reimbursable, uh, I think it was 55 cents a mile. So you take the number of miles you drove for business and you get re the government when I was in the military, when I was in the army, you would get 50, I think it may have been 40 years ago, it may have been 48 cents a mile. But what you do is however many miles you drove, you take that and multiply it times 48 cents a mile and you would get a travel pay for that much. When I was in the army reserves, I would travel from here to Fort Benning, Georgia and back or from here to Fort Bliss and back. I would get more travel pay than I would get paid. Okay, so I just don't make a lot of money. Uh, but travel pay is good. The government says you can write off for income tax as an expense, you can write off up to 55 cents a mile. So if I use my car for business and my boss doesn't pay me back, I can write off on my income tax for the use of my car. So what you do is you look at the number, you look at how much it is. Like I said, 44 cents a mile. As long as this number doesn't get too close to $1, your car is doing pretty good. If you get up in the $2 per mile range, you might want to think about getting another car because that car is starting to put a little bit too much money into your budget. Okay? But using this, you can estimate, hey, I'm going to go on a road trip. Okay, sit down on the, you know, pull up map quest. How many miles am I going to travel? 44 cents times that number of miles, you can estimate what it's going to cost on the trip. Now, understand, you're, you're not going to have a, well, hopefully not have an alternate year in place, the tires you got to replace, so the number will actually be lower than what you actually predict, but it's a way to uh, predict what it's going to cost. Okay, so, again, the way it is fixed plus variable, divided by miles is equal to cost per mile. And I think I got that on here somewhere. Hopefully I do. Yes, right here. Second page, formulas right there. There's two, two formulas, okay? Depreciation and then the other one, cost per mile. And this is it, guys. This is it for this, check, for this section. We'll do renting and, and leasing Monday. We're done with the chapter. If you have individual questions, I will answer them. But this is it for today.